move the crop around a little bit here. That's good. All right, that's us. <laughs> now I got to figure out the routing issue. That's good. All right, that's us. <laughs> now I got to figure out the routing issue. That's good. All right, that's us. <laughs> now I got to figure Okay, so I do have my microphone audio, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll stop the the window capture and restart it with uh with the Discord call. They cannot hear you yet. Uh, I'm not sure why that is at the moment, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> Thanks. Mm, all right, let's see. Um, but definitely keep an eye on chat. Thank you for your patience, everybody. All right. Um, over to Discord. Maybe it's because I popped it out. That would be weird. Remember, Chris, when you when you uh, tab out of the game, um, it yeah. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, maybe it's an issue with uh, the window. Mm. Try this. All right, say something, Chris. Test, test, test. Right, test one, two. That's good. <laughs> okay, so now let me see if I can turn up the volume for the game. Okay, uh, somebody says now we can hear you both. So, hey, hey, uh, we're making progress. Mm hmm. Um, there's a little bit of the, well, okay, we'll check that later. There's a little bit of the game above my camera there. Oh, yeah. Kind of reflecting. Yeah. I'll, I'll Hi, everyone. The filter. <laughs> Hi, Raven Lordis. I know, it's like in the old times, technical problems. Ask him if there's any echo on uh, your voice or mine. Well, you can ask it too because they can hear you. <laughs> or they should be able to. Yeah. Any any echoes in our voices? Amiga! Yay! <laughs> Okay, good. So the, the voices are good, apparently. So we just need to get that game audio going. Yeah, so the game audio is... It's it's there. How, how quiet is it? Quiet is, I mean, if I turn everything up... I mean, I can hear it all. Yeah, yeah. But OBS is still not grabbing the game audio, which is weird because they should... Like get it no, 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 the no, same the time. The game audio is there. Okay. Yeah, the game audio is there. So you all can hear the game and everything. Chat, please. Yeah, 
And just the question is whether or not it's loud oh, enough. Oh, so, yeah, they say yes. All right. Awesome. I, I think I think we're probably pretty good to go. Okay, let me now. Let think me check we're in business. <laughs> One second. So now I need to pop out chat so I can read it everywhere. And for the folks that are here on the Twitch side of things, thank you very much. We are simulcasting to YouTube Live and Twitch. For the folks that are interested. Oh, well, let me check this out too. Um, where is my streamer bot? Yeah, so maybe chain introduce yourself. Give me, give me a second. Yeah, yeah, give me a second, give me a second. I still okay. gotta configure, gotta configure stuff. Otherwise, we're gonna get crazy. Uh, I'm gonna see if chat works between both. Uh, from streamer bot side of things. Yep. Testing. So I see 19 people Woo. are watching the stream right now. Chris, can you see the this chat? Um, I see the chat on my end. I don't know if it's in the stream, that's a very small uh, image there. But I can definitely see the chat here, but I don't, yeah. Oh, I see something. <laughs> something is wisping around the screen. All right, let's see. I got chat open on that side. I think it only shows up if somebody actually chats. Uh, someone type something in chat, please. Yeah, so my chats from the streamer bot don't go. I was just curious if I can actually pick up your chat in my chat together. Right. There we go. Someone sent a test chat. Thank you. And the answer to that is no. Okay, we'll do we'll do no. the slow tech side. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. You can relay any questions that there are. But we're here anyway to enjoy the game a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, all right, let me just open my Twitch stream as well so I can see that chat on the OBS side of things. There we go. Hello, chat. Hey, Holger. So, Chris, we Kasper, should make this... Casper uh, from Switzerland is in there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so how many of the folks do you know right now in in chat? Uh, at least at least five, six, seven people. Heck yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Do you want to do a Everyone little intro? Uh, yep. Yeah, let's do a let's do a little intro. Okay, so we're both here. So hello do everybody you. out there. We're on the lives uh, on this rotating planet with you. I am Shane Hollander, also known as Dr. Bosky. I'm the creative director for the game Interstellar Sentinel and a man that doesn't need any introduction, but Chris, please introduce yourself. <laughs> well, I'm Chris Hulsbeck. I'm the composer for Interstellar Sentinel. And uh, Shane and I worked together at Factor 5 USA for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And Touch Factor. And touch factor yeah technically chris we've done four albums together four video game albums yeah yeah touch fish uh was uh was a really cool project yeah absolutely so but i'm even more happy that we're that we're working together on this stuff now because this is this is more my more your jams uh, my origin stories with uh shoot em ups right mm -hmm. It's full circle. I am, uh, as I like to, I was telling some of my friends to the uh, the other day when we were talking about the stream, and I was like, oh, I'm getting Chris to dust off his shmup thumbs. Yeah, just to play it. So super, super cool. Yeah. Okay. So maybe before we start the game, mm -hmm. uh, just quick about this uh, uh, title music. So the idea there was um, to mix kind of the feeling of Metroid Prime, which was one of my all time favorite uh, title tracks on the N64 um, with a little bit of uh, Terminator vibes sprinkled in and that worked out 
and made the perfect uh, t a title theme for this game, I think. Yeah, so I, to dovetail on that, um, I went to Chris with a wacky idea, and the thing is, thanks James Cameron, The Terminator was essentially, and this will tell you a lot about me, but it was essentially my bedtime movie when I was uh, just a wee lad for about six months. I would get my big pickle, and I would be able to, to watch a movie before I went to bed, and uh, my mom didn't really give too many fucks, so, it, and, uh, so I have a lot of just that sci-fi dystopic like it's a fantastic movie for lots of different reasons obviously but i know it right. really really well very few times have i gone so deep in, into things so i went to chris and i was like chris i really love the terminator there's a couple of remixes of it, but uh, the terminator uh, title theme because it has that right and it just you have the big sense that come up and it just it just does it for me and then we were nerding out about metroid um and metroid both Super Metroid and regular Metroid, there are a number of tracks that are also just mwah, chef's kiss, so good. So I was like, Chris, can we can we channel this thing that we love kind of into the title theme that we have here? And uh, so we did this version, um, which was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so here, here we are. Hey, should I start the game? Yeah, start the game. Yeah, so basically today, folks, what we're gonna do is we're just hanging out for about an hour and a half and we're going to, um, I'm going to commentate. Chris is going to play. We're all going to have a good laugh. We're going to listen to the the, the game a little bit. Um, Chris has probably got about an hour, maybe, uh, of uh, gameplay experience. So he's going to take the extra lives, and we'll see how far we get. It will be a lot of shenanigans and fun. Feel free to ask any questions, any comments, any thoughts, ideas. You know, this is a, this is not a, a one way broadcast. And uh, yeah, we're here to have a good time. I'm going with casual at this point still. Extra shit. <laughs> yes. The only main differences with casual um, and to heroic is essentially the amount of lives you get. Okay. And I'm going right in the game. Um, you you prompted me to play the tutorial. Yep, I did. You're all finally. tutorialized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're going to tell people anyway what all the different things are. It's. it's uh, yeah, little, of course. It can go, get a little bit crazy sometimes. It, it does get a little crazy sometimes. So we have Heels back on deck here, hanging out with uh, Dr. Bosky, being the real pilot here. The Hill Taskmaster is coming into, into the frame. Chris doing a great job using his rapid fire shot, taking out some of these Hellmasters. These Hellmasters, uh, um, they're, uh, they're kind of crazy. Activating pacifist mode. We have 40 seconds on the clock. The thing with pacifist mode, folks, is that you just have to survive. It boils it all down to just surviving. You can't shoot because you're a pacifist at this point. Your chain combo multiplier keeps going. You get a free bonus extend that comes from this. And then at the end, uh, you get also a regain to get more um, power-ups because there's, there's a lot of weapons. Um, and uh, so it puts you later into the weapon progression stage. Did I tell you that I hate this mode? <laughs> oh, you're doing fine. You're doing fine, soldier. Chris has got that extra pressure. It's going to be tons of fun. Look at that ah! Loki hanging out. Chris trying not to lose his, his marbles here. Picks up the Loki. There you go. Almost there, Chris. Pass I got my shots complete. back. Pick up your, uh, uh, your extra weapon item plates there. Uh, we had a, a a new fan of the game, Borderline. He was playing a little bit earlier, and uh, he was putting up one of his all-time personal bests. I can't wait to check that out in Discord. Mm, what do we got here? There you go. Then it says, cheers, guys. And then uh, Casey Amiga Memories. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, what happened? Did you pause, Chris? Oh, wait, wait. Nope. Chris is also, full disclosure, uh, he is in the middle of a, a new storm, so it might turn out that the stream gets a little crusty every once in a while. He's saying, yeah, it like... and it's, there's a lot of noise and craziness. So, of course, Chris is going to summon the natural elements when we want to do something fun together. <laughs> yeah. So I'm uh, also mm -hmm. streaming off grid, so I don't have like a cable connection here. Yeah, he's streaming off of Starlink. <laughs> right, maybe go. maybe we should call up Elon Musk and up my data rate here. I hear he likes classic retro games for uh, for a lot of the focus right. they, they give you. Uh, we'll, we'll send him a copy so he can give us a boost. By the way, 
in chat, what were you guys' first shmups? First shmups you ever played? First shmup you fell in love with? We already took some damage, uh, go. that's good. Chris doing a great job picking up the Robonoids. There is a Seeker in the bottom right corner. Let's see if Chris can pick this up here. He's trying to dodge those bullets like a champ. Getting good use out of the Plasma Tickler. Stay, oh, Chris, you gotta stay in the center of that for three seconds. Oh, I didn't know that. You, yeah, it's all good. That's all good. I mean, I'm only a thousand, several thousand hours into the game, so. <laughs> Just user says R-Type. Nice, R-Type is, I'm definitely channeling some of that R-Type vibes here for sure. Uh, boy, two six five Come comes in with Katakas on the C sixty four. Dude, so good, Katakas. Oh. I, I'm a big, big fan. I have to say, you make it pretty fair for all the bullets that are coming. So, the the really hardcore. It, it's this weird thing with the game here, where I try to find this strike, this balance between Gradius, because I really like the the longer levels, the horizontal shmups, because you feel like you're progressing and, and going through a world. Um, but I also really saw a lot of bullet hell and I, I was kind of curious and interested So I wanted to kind of design in that space So you kind of have this kind of mix and match of, of styles where you get a little more bullet helly at the uh, at the boss side of things But uh, we wanted to create a, a welcoming shot something that that really is is uh, is approachable because frankly shoot ups are, are hard shooters are hard and um, a lot of people have fallen out of favor with them so I wanted to consciously not just dial a game for my crazy skill um, or this crazy skill gaps for all of the shmup lovers out there but to really be kind of welcoming to new folks as well so that's why the game uh, changes oh by the way Chris new, new weapon with the last update I call this the yep. flex capacitor now <laughs> okay um, data set says this looks great any plans for releasing this on consoles as well yes we are in discussions about doing a PlayStation 5 version, and then from there, um, uh, I, pr I think Switch will be next, and we're also going to support um, that the game, the engine technically does it, but um, uh, yeah, so it'll be Switch, and then we'll see where we go from there. Mm, I try not to dis disclose too many secrets. <laughs> Whoa. I like this weapon. Yeah. That's my style. Ring shot spread. Also, your auto weapon creates these, uh, these uh, I, they call them plasma worms, plasma ring worms. They have, uh, they, they spool out and then they chase the enemies, which is kind of fun. Holy. Ah. Casey says, Chris it's... usually always lets Audi play for him. I know, I, I had to beg and plead to get Chris to play. I was like, come on, Chris, you can do it. Because if I play, it's... There's there's a thing for that, but I thought it'd be more fun to do some commentating and, and just to handle all of the Q&A. Yeah, Howdy, and then the way, also, out there, I hope you're doing well. Was that Chris? Yeah, I like I like your sports uh, caster commentary on yeah, when things thanks. get really crazy. <laughs> well, the uh, the that's one of the things that I really love from the games. Uh, you know, I, I've I've spent my whole life playing games. I was very lucky to start with the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I was I played games on my Pentium, on my Two Eighty Six, my Three Eighty Six, my Four Eighty Six, my Pentium Ninety. Like you know, so I I. I I, as I played games like Quake and Killer Instinct and and uh, Doom, like even Gears of War kind of channeled this too. But like with uh, with Killer Instinct, it was like Ultra Combo, and so I really wanted to bring that kind of over the top kind of flavor to the game itself. And then that kind of you know also spooled out into commentary and you know being a streamer and a few other things as well. So. Sometimes mm. I cannot believe how much is going on on the screen here. <laughs> And it gets even crazier, Chris. Every time you pick up a monster trophy, it basically creates a, a, a wave of a new enemies. So as you play the game, the game is like kind of an onion. It, it definitely unwraps more and makes you cry. <laughs> the big game, uh, Gamowski says, strangely feel some vibes from uh, Apidia. Yeah. Just yeah, second, sure. Yes, yeah, second love is Raiden too. Ooh, such good. Such Absolutely. Good mm -hmm. Andreas says I'm a late. I'm a bit late to the stream, but I had to retract where I read it from on Mastodon. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on over from Mastodon, and you're you're just on time. We had a bunch of technical bits um, before we got started, so you didn't miss much. We're still in level one. Mm -hmm. And welcome, welcome. Weapons up. 
Holger says, gameplay seems similar, uh, simpler than our type and Katakas in those days. The games ended after only a few seconds. Or Chris isn't <laughs> yeah. just a perfect player. <laughs> or is just a perfect player. <laughs> no, I'm not. The game is very fair, I have to say, particularly in its casual mode. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm working on a boss rush mode right now, um, and it's oh, you know what? I need I need to turn on the bot. Whoops, L bot. One second. Holy crap, Ola. Chris coming into the Fortress of Flesh boss. Blast That's him with the super into the face. Good. Fortress Flesh boss now has the brain caps exposed. This is my nod to Contra, by the way. Contra wall bosses, boosh, blew my mind when I was a kid. So good. I just beefed this weapon set, by the way, Chris. Craziness. Yeah. Chris, so the uh, auto, uh, auto missiles do its job on the top brain cap there. Chris is dealing with the storm. He's got a few hitches. Oh, Chris Here we go. is just getting rushed. Oh, no. Yeah. And another one. And there we go. And now we're back. Another super on the second phase of the Lost Fortress of Flesh boss here. Nice use of that, by the way, Chris. That, see, that's, a, that's an advanced strategy. And then with this boss, I wanted to engage and tell the story of, uh, of Bullet Hell, but Bullet Hell where you have plenty of gaps and it's easy, so then players could sort of get used to the idea that there's going to be a lot of bullets. You got to scooch up a little more, Chris. Got it. Oh, Analytics says, says hello, sorry for bothering you. I want to blah, 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 just spam. All right. Um... Borderline says, first was Ultimate Dan Maku 3. Oh, really? Ah. When the uh, when the stream cannot keep up there, do you lose the audio? Um, Not on my side, but we might lose the audio from your side. Depends on if you're talking. Oh, mm. I think um, game music audio it usually hitches as well because it's just one. It's packed in one stream and it's supposed to say. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, you can always enjoy the soundtrack on Bandcamp, right? It's true. <laughs> if you guys haven't, you guys should definitely pick it up. Um, um, speaking of which, let me. All right, one second. and now we're going in the second level loading there we go mm -hmm. Weapons up. there we go and yeah easy searches out there Interstellar Sentinel, Bandcamp, um, you'll definitely find uh, links to all of Heelsbeck's great work. Um, and, and of course the soundtrack and any support would be nice. Um, also, we put the, the, you still need to do it on your side, Chris, but uh, we put the soundtrack up on YouTube so you can listen to the whole thing. And it, uh, the other thing that's also quite nice is that we're, we're very content creator friendly because we're content creators ourselves. So there's no DMCA. There's no takedown notices, so you can use the soundtrack for your own video production and live streams, um, which I highly encourage. Um, the arrange has been really, really good. Uh, let's see here. So we got that. I don't need that. This is Doctor so far, time ago. I'm doing well, buddy. How are you doing? We're having a special day today. We're just uh, hanging out with uh, the legendary Chris Hillsbeck playing our game, Interstellar Sentinel, um, and uh, just having a good time. We're streaming simultaneously to Twitch and YouTube. Andreas says, uh, any specific reason why this is done as unlisted stream? Oh no, Chris, did you set, you didn't change your stream to uh, to public? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can always pause it if you need to. As you're dodging the uh, the the tree, yeah, know. I think I'll wait until the next. Uh, Get to the end of the level. Here. Yep. Or here, let's see. Oh, you can do that too. Ah, um, thanks for that, Olga. 
How how do I do that in edit? Mm, I have no idea. My my live stream foo on YouTube is pretty is pretty uh pretty Yeah, low. Unlisted. I know they are public. I don't Casey know why says, I did it's that. not just us who are getting older. Our gaming reflex sizes are too. That's true, Casey. I'm fighting the power. I still put so no it's, W's. Now it's set to public. Yay! Thanks for that, Holger. I appreciate it. Back into the game. Thank you. Borderline says, yo, yo, Borderline, I'm going to get the soundtrack soon. Oh, thanks, dude. That's awesome. Uh, and two point. Yeah, so Borderline is, um, uh, so here's the thing. So you guys probably don't know this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it well, but. Uh, let's see, oh, can I, I got to see if I, I can't actually see myself on the camera here. One second. There we go. There we go. So I created these pins. And I put out a challenge to to the community, and I said, anyone that beats the game on heroic difficulty with a one CC, one CC is one credit clear. One credit clear has come from the old school um, hobbying of basically putting in your quarter in the machine and beating the whole game without having to put another quarter in, right? So for the folks that don't know, which a lot of people don't, um, which is, is kind of surprising, you know, perspective. And um, so last week, Borderline basically turned in their one credit clear, and they're the for they were the first person that I sent a, a pin out to and I'm waiting to, for it to arrive for borderline because there's some extra special stuff with it Weapon Pretty down. pretty cool mm -hmm. All right. ah! uh Oh Chris is starting to oh, feel that gosh. pain She's Chris getting taken down by the dread musk Dread Musk is something that uh, that you don't want to be seeing. I mean, if you stopped at a stoplight and you saw one of these pull up behind you, you'd be, you know, pooping your pants. <laughs> oh, I'm at pacifist mode. I don't like it. And uh, Borderline, thank you very much for the streams. Borderline says, my friend Quake got uh, 2.4 billion, so I got more work to do. Oh, really? Down. Wow. Dang, you guys are already closing in on my on my high scores for sure. Uh, if he got the 2.4 billion, he's also saw the best ending, which is quite silly. The game's got multiple endings. They're ending cards, but they're fun. Hmm. Chris picking up pacifist mode. Pacifist mode run out on the clock here. Getting a nice screen clear. Grab those weapons, Chris. Things are going to go crazy. Chris selling into his new weapon I'm set here. Sure it is. Nice five-way spread. Chris Roach in the Lost Soul with Sphere. Oh, man. The Wicked Center. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Welcome, man. We're, we're simultaneously streaming today. Um, today's uh, stream is about doing a casual playthrough of the game with Chris Hilsbeck, the main composer for the game. Uh, I would say main, I'd say the only composer for the game. Hmm. Let's see. Andreas says, thank you. Now I got the notification from YouTube that stream started. <laughs> That's good. Hopefully other people have too. Chris dealing with the storm, getting some hitches there. Coming into the level two um, boss battle. So here, the these bosses were essentially the, the main villain of the, the game is a uh, the, basically the orchestrator behind the scenes. His name's uh, Srevis, so he's a demonic That's titan. Definitely the better weapon for this guy. Yeah, the infinity laser is so good. That's my my uh, nod to Gradius. I love that laser. Can really just like sweep. Mm-hmm. And so these uh, vampires were employed to oh, become the generals of this vampiric army. Oh no, Chris got hit by Sakusius's love bugs. <laughs> and uh, at, at the moment where they um, were successful, Srevis lured them into a clearing and had his mages cast uh, a spell that at the moment of dawn encased them into stone. So they're still alive inside of their stone sarcophagus, if you will, stone forms, uh, and they can still use their abilities. So now he summons them yeah, just some of the fun stuff we do for the, you know, just nerding out for the game. Andreas, Andreas Dublin says, hello, everyone. 
Hello, Andres. Thanks for coming. We're happy you're here. Wicked, how are you doing today? Uh, Wicked Center says, how much Dr. Bosky is too much? Mm, I don't know. Like, you gotta ask my ex-wife that. <laughs> It's a trick question. You can never get too much, Mr. Dr. Bosky. Aw, oh, thanks, Wicked. Appreciate you. I really like that weapon. Yeah, you're doing great against Jennerbus here. Jennerbus getting down to about 50% on his life bar. He's ready to switch up his attacks here. Chris just opening out of the gate with a super here in the middle, trying to get as much as he can, not stepping forward to get those star gems. But he's in pocket. And with this, with this boss, we really want to layer up the attacks. And again, trying to be welcoming to the concepts of shmups. Keeping things going, but also not being crazy brutal. I'm working on another mode in the game for the people that really want the brutal stuff. <laughs> Jetbrush going into final form here. Oh, Chris's internet connection getting a little rough again. There we go. Ah, oh, Chris, I can't believe we're having a storm right now from your side. Roof. Oh, yeah, sorry. Nah, that's nothing you can do about the weather. So, Chris, uh, question for you. Yep. So, when um, when you're composing music, what what does the process look for, like for you when you're, you're trying to like, because I know how we kind of work together, but when you're getting the inspiration for the music? Well, this one was like, you just send me gameplay footage of a certain level and then I'll just put it behind my uh, Cubase and mm -hmm. my my uh, digital audio workstation software and I'll just uh, I'll just start. And then we also talked about like that we wanted to have a lot of uh, chip sound elements. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was basically the, the idea and it needed to be kind of like fast paced mm -hmm. so i went back a little bit to my roots uh -huh. uh, you know Dude, channeling gri gripper, ripper, tarik oh and, my god yeah tarik and then jim power and katakis and all those mm -hmm. uh, trying to get back into that kind of groove i went through basically your entire i've been through your discography more than once um but i went through and i cherry picked all the like tracks that really resonated with me and uh, it was quite, it was quite a, um, I had to get my spear out and like, Chris, faster, it's gotta be faster. It's gotta be faster, <laughs> you know? So for like the boss tracks, but also we still have that, that very like, you know, from the run and gun roots, we have that exploration kind of like flavor too. So um, yeah, we had a, we had a good back and forth uh, mm -hmm. about improving the tracks and you always pushed for a little bit more, which is good. Mm -hmm. But I also felt very comfortable with this material. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it shows, it really shows. I'm so proud of the work that we've done together here. This is a fan, this has been fantastic. Uh, let me take a check. Andreas says, nice to see Chris playing a game he made the soundtrack for. Go, go, go! Yeah! Chris Fox says, hi, Master Chris. Mirko says, hey, hey guys, uh, feel free to ask any questions or about the game or about Chris or game development, uh, audio production, music production, any of those things. We're, we're just uh, using the game as a backdrop here. And Chris is starting oh. to sweat bullets. Checking him out. Uh. You got this, Chris, you got this. Uh. Oh, brutality. Chris threading the gap here, getting reset with a nice little screen clear. Working on the Dark AV Mage going downtown there. Picking up the Loki strings there. He's going to get a super in pocket, which is great. Skelly Scooters on the bottom there. I like the way those guys turned out. They're super fun. Chris getting pushed back a little bit here. Finding himself kind of in a precarious situation. Spider Tank Demons coming down the, the, the ramp, but uh, they get taken out. Chris has got to make a nice little dodge here down to the bot. Takes down the Skelly Scoocher. Here comes a little seeker for Monster Trophy side of things. You got to take the Skelly Scoochers out from the bottom between the uh, the demonic flesh barrier there. Super, Chris, super. Yeah. Oh, but he misses the Skelly Scoocher just a tiny bit, so he's not going to pick up that Monster Trophy. That's the uh, the transparent blinky uh, monster face that you saw back there. Mm-hmm. I'm just uh, trying to stay alive. 
Jeremy says, Chris Hillsbeck, Chris Hillsbeck, thank you for making my 80s fun, awesome, fun experience listening to your music on the, uh, the 60, C64 and Amiga. Yeah, it's so good. Chris, favorite memory from Amiga times, go. Um, well, <laughs> probably, probably when I first got it, you know, like the Amiga 1000. Mm -hmm. Playing uh, Marble Madness for the first time. Yeah, that was awesome. so exciting. So um, I was—I uh, really wanted to have an Amiga. Um, I had a, a Commodore, and um, I had a Tandy, and a couple other um, like PC side of things. But I always saw the games that were coming out of the Amiga because of the side scrollers, and I wanted one so bad, but I just couldn't afford it back then. I was—I was still mowing yards for games. Yeah, we're raking leaves to save up. Back then, games weren't cheap. You couldn't rent them. So, uh, unless you had copy parties, <laughs> which I know were super popular pacifist for me. Mode. You just keep hitting those pacifist modes. I love it. But you got this, you got this. Easy on the controls. One hit point left in the bank. You get a free life for checking out pacifist mode. Picks up the health point on deck. Nice, nice, good dodge. Soul Blight Reapers are pushing from Chris back in. Oh no, Chris trying to find his way. Oh, but he does get the compass by the passive mode completion. Make sure you pick up your weapon plates here. Yeah, good stuff. That's the way to do it. I just changed that weapon uh, set there for this section. Whoa. And thanks, Jerem, by the way. Ian says, bonjour. I cannot read that. Uh, let me take a look here. Anyone, can anyone translate that for me? Otherwise, I'll be over to Google Translate in a sec. Oh, ran into the boulder. Thanks, by the way, whoever popped in. Ah, oh, Dream Stepper! Passless mode is delightful, says Dream Stepper. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. I'm so glad that you're playing the game. Dream Stepper, we're Jesus. live right now on Twitch and on uh, YouTube. So I'm 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 uh, manning two two different chats the first time, so it's a bit weird <laughs> and awesome. And let's see here. So the bonjour was good evening. What is the shmup? Thank you for this video and always a pleasure to see Chris and listen to his songs. It's a significant period for me with the Amiga. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So good to hear. Uh, this game is called Interstellar Sentinel. Chris did the original soundtrack for it, which you can find on Bandcamp. And I'll drop you a link for that. Ah! And uh, yeah, so it's ah! this, this is <laughs> Chris getting chased around by Skarzen. And uh, yeah, so this is a project that I started working on just over two years ago. And uh, I, this is kind of my love letter to shmups and basically a, life, a lifetime of gaming. Um, as you can see, it's an incredible, been an incredible passion project. And being able to partner with Chris to do the soundtrack um, was just a dream come true. Uh, let's see, Bandcamp. Get that link. God, this track is so good, Chris. Thank you. Let me turn this up for me. I really like how this track breaks down too. It's so good. By the way, the album is like 54 minutes of music. Chris looked at me at one point because uh, I just got him. He was in a fever getting it done. And he's like, we did a whole album. I was like, it's a full CD, right? And we're not even done. We have a, a new little thing coming in the works. I can't quite talk about it yet, but it's there. It, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a work in progress. So, and uh, by the way, here's the link to uh, to the Bandcamp. It's Chris's Bandcamp. Oh, so it's at the tracks. slowing down. <laughs> Actually, that kind of helps. Yeah, it's old school, right? It is slowing down. I can hear the whole thing slowing down. The first time. I gotta make your machine sweat a little bit. You're on your little laptop, right? Yeah. Uh, he's on his like, <laughs> probably it's seven years old, right, Chris? <laughs> no, it's a uh, 2019. Yeah, okay, all right. Nice. Your bottom weapon is gonna do a lot more damage. Scar's in really trying to do his best to finish this off here. Chris not taking no for an answer. Scar's in going downtown. Didn't get your time um, bonus, but you're there. Look at the doors opening to the inter the uh, the inner sanctum. 
The dark wellspring chamber, actually. Okay, let me catch up on chat here. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Borderline, for the translation. Awesome. I appreciate you. Francisco says, hi, everybody. Hey, Francisco. Rebel Matrix. Or Rebel Music. Sorry. <laughs> Francisco says, wow, this game seems to be an amazing bullet hell. Yeah, it's a little mix of both. Thank you. People are having a lot of fun with it. Uh, Borderline has been, he's probably like 60 hours into the game now. He's chasing the best ending and uh, he's trying to dethrone me on the leaderboard as well. So it's been a ton of fun. Mm, let's see. Andrea says, you're doing great at managing both chats. Dr. Bosky, thanks, bud. Chris says this very beautiful graphics, enjoying the music too. Yeah, Chris really loves this track. It's got this kind of tribal drum action. Also on his Patreon, yeah. people kind of lost their minds over this track. Mine says he's playing it on a C64, of course, a total pocket computer, <laughs> a calculator, a potato. I have no idea what's going on here. Just trying to stay alive. Yep, uh, well, you have a lot less experience with this one, uh, this side of it, too. Oh, you did get the monster trophy. That's why it's extra crazy. And of course, your internet connection is just going, going to terrible Monkey. town. Oh, man. I really had high hopes for Starlink. Yeah, but well, if if I can't get like a consistent upload speed because download is great, but yeah, no, that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. And we're what only 720p is going on well. here? <laughs> you got this, Chris. Oh, get down okay. there and blow up those, those spider tanks. I got to get rid of those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not like kicking my butt here. Let me see here. So and while we have a slideshow version, oh, Chris is back. Dark Avian Mages. Demons. Dark Avian Mages coming out of the Dark Wellspring here. Chris doing a decent job trying to stay. Don't go into the smoke, Chris. Smoke's going to hurt you. Okay. Gets a nice weapon switch change there. Things are slowing down as we go into the next phase, which is great. Loki's coming out to help out. Another weapon's up here. Oh my God, it's Kyoki! Good to see you, buddy. How you doing? Welcome back. Did, did are you guys okay? Oh no, I'm in pacifist mode. Hope you guys are okay Why with did the I do that? Things. You and your wife, that is. Oh no! Why yeah. did I go into pacifist mode? Get in the corner. Get in the corner, Chris. You got this. Slow and steady on the stick. You got this. I I I got this right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you got this. Eight seconds left. Jesus. <laughs> We're making Chris sweat. I just pick up some bullets on along the way. You're like the bullet collector now. <laughs> Kyoki, what's the news? How are you doing? So you saw that, uh, I mean, you've seen this, the journey of the game um, for a couple of years. So I'm here with Chris Hulsbeck, who is the composer for the game. So after this, the soundtrack was about a year in the making. So a little bit at a time. And it's so lovingly done. It's a, it's, it's near and dear. It's also got, it gets stuck in my mind, which is good. It gives me the earwigs, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, good to hear it, Kyoki. I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I didn't mean to just immediately ask that. I just, it wasn't back in my mind. And yeah, good to hear it. Mm -hmm. Um. Check it out, chat. Mm hmm. Uh, Data set, Seta says the soundtrack begs to go on vinyl as well someday. Huh. Uh, we're, we're in talks. <laughs> there will be vinyl dreams. But, uh, Chris, didn't you tell me it's like, it's like 30 minutes of music on a vinyl? No, no, no. We, we will do double vinyl if we do this. Oh, of course. But my it's point like is. It's, um, I think it's 20, I don't know, can, how much can you do? I think you can do 20 minutes per, per side. <laughs> so if you have double, you could do, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so it's we going to be three it. three discs for our uh, uh, three records. Two discs, right? uh, four four sides. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, which is awesome. And just to, to put it back in perspective, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I also yeah. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Francisco says, Chris plays very well. I have never seen him play playing before. <laughs> Pretty cool experience. I know, right? It, it took it's me a very, lot of convincing to get Chris to play, so. Um, it's a very fair game. And uh, yeah, that 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 is uh, that's huge praise because designing a game that is welcoming, super hard. Designing a game that is crazy hard, not as hard as you think, especially when you've, you know, like I've spent thousands of hours making this, so. No one, very few people are going to, to spend that kind of time with the game over the course of its life. Puts it in perspective. Uh, Garmin asks, what game engine is this uh, game made in? Yeah, so there's, um, so it's really, really cool. So uh, the name of the engine is called Schmuck Creator. It's PC only right now. We're working on it. Um, and I serve the community over there. It's just a really, really nice guy um, that uh, is about our age. And uh, he's French, and uh, he's been working on the engine since uh, I found it about as early as 2011. So it's a C++ engine, um, and it has the Ogre 3D uh, for the open source rendering for that. So, and uh, we're not, we're just, we just, it just, he just released it. Well, he just released it two years ago. It just turned two years old. So it's been beta before that as well. So super, super cool. Holger says, I'm with you. Very confusing with all the bullets on screen. Something ah! you have to be used to. Yeah, the, the bullet hell side of things, um, it's, um, it's you know, like I'm straddling that line between traditional shmup, adventure shmup, because I do things that I haven't ever seen in a shmup before. And then you've got these bullet hell elements, right? So one of the things that's important to know is you have a very small hitbox where you see the X. That is the only place you can take damage from. So... And that helps navigate the, the bullets. And the other thing that I personally did is I built the game to also make good use of analog sticks. So on a controller. Now, granted, you could still play with arcade sticks and all that and do the typical tap dodging. But with an analog stick, it's silky smooth. So you can go very slow amidst the chaos. So once you start to see the patterns, you can really get into this really cool flow. Very, very cool. Ah, I'm losing lives. You got this, Chris. All right, let's get let's get focused. Here we go. Final fourth phase of the boss. Chris is really starting to struggle a little bit here. You got it. And uh, I've never seen these like laser lasso bullets. Like you know, you can actually kind of push against them a little bit, which is interesting. He's low. He's us. He almost got this. I get to see the new timeout uh, code that I put in as well. I think the Lokis are going to come and give you some uh, supers in a sec. Whoa. All right, here comes the Loki string. Whoa. There's a super, Chris. Grab that super. Super it. Super it. Boom in his face. Sure did. Yeah. You ran out. Uh, he's about 30% left of life. Get that super. Chris is hanging on for day life. Super, super. Another super in the face. And the best part is the super is good. Another one. Oh, he just got away. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that is the story arc. Um, that's pretty much the curve for the game. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it takes a little, a little practice there for sure. Uh, it's getting harder. So, so now I take the gloves off. Um, and these become the kind of the they're still new content but they're remixes of, of like enemies and all the things you've learned up to this point francisco says i'm definitely gonna check this game on steam as soon as possible i loved it seems pretty challenging oh thanks man i think that you know as, as shmups go as well like it's uh it's super important to have a banging soundtrack it really sets the mood and tone and I, I've I've grown up playing I've grown up playing games in the arcade. I've been very lucky to be here in the states, and you know my I, classic arcade retro games um, are a bit of my jam. And this is very much a love letter to shmups and that kind of flow state gaming too. 
And I tried to get my son into these style of games for a long time and it works for some people. They just love having that direct, just constantly that good flow and focus. But for other people, it's also really challenging, right? And they're not, they, that's not actually what they want out of their game. So it's interesting to see how things have changed over the course of, uh, of gaming. How's the stream looking? It looks like it's stuck. Uh, it's, it's better. Well, it, it was stuck. Um, I mean, I'm watching yeah. the live stream here on YouTube as well. So I definitely. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> because in my in my uh, YouTube preview here in the uh, YouTube studio, it's totally frozen. Mm -hmm. So as long as people can still see it, that's good. Yeah, I can definitely see it. So, so now the Casey question says, is: I use you, yeah. you said you're still working on the game. Are uh -huh. you planning to maybe release more levels? Uh, yeah. So. Um, I'm basically working on a new mode, and it's a, it's basically kind of a Bosch Rush mode with uh, with roguelike elements. So, and in that mode, you go through nine bosses. It's much shorter; it's about 18 minutes. Uh, you'll probably be able to finish in about 12. But I took um, a majority of the bosses in the game, and I um, basically reimagined them. So they have new attacks, new bullet patterns, um, and then you go from boss to boss to boss, and in between each boss, you can exchange your health for power ups. Or you can take curses to make the game harder, but get health back. So very, very cool stuff. And uh, right now, it's a crime against humanity. It's a, it's, it's, uh, it's way too hard. <laughs> but I just got through doing the first playthrough. Um, I think last week on Twitch. Jesus. Francisco says, "Ouch! That uh, the supers in the, the face must have hurt." Yeah, and they act like a like a shotgun as well. So if you get close and you point blank them, you get each beam of the super. Chris going for the pacifist mode. Things are getting a little crusty on his stream side of things. Four star link. Maybe this was a good place for pacifist mode. <laughs> I have done all levels without getting hit. Single, you know, get to make sure it's possible, right? Uh oh, Chris is getting last uh, corralled by the lesser demon bullets here. Chris finding new space on the board here, doing a good job. He's trying to lead. Look at the dance. Dodges down a little bit, takes a little bit of damage. Chris is not oh. looking good for this world. Chris going down. Got it. Passive mode did complete, and the nice thing is, is passive mode. People. Usually are like, wait, this is way too hard. It's too hard. It's too crazy. But then they usually come around and going, oh, wait a minute, because you get an extend, so it's free. But you also get to regain to get uh, the extra light. Get you got to get those weapons, Chris. Super, get the weapons. Yeah, super, super, super. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> too ah! late. Oh my goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see here. Where are we at? Chris has got a super in pocket, four hit points in the bank. No monster trophy medals. Hello, Taskmaster is definitely kind of crept by. Chris, remember your bottom weapons are 10 times more powerful than your top. So if it's not getting it, getting it done, you switch weapons. There you go. The weapon now, the bottom weapons, because they are 10 times more powerful, they have a charge up. And they also are a little bit harder to aim because they have their charge up. In this case, you have the, the tri laser beam. So the part of the core gameplay is the switching. And uh, I I played, I, I've beaten, I played lots and lots of Einhander. Love Einhander. It's such a great shmup um, from the PS1 era. Um, and one of the things I was really inspired by is they had weapon points. So you had a bottom weapon and you had usually a top or kind of a mid weapon. So I, I was inspired by a lot of that and, and brought that over to uh, the kind of shmup that I was, you know, that I wanted to play. This is very much a shmup that I, I really wanted to play myself. Super, Chris, super. No. One too late. Yeah. When uh, I need a short break. Okay. I'll be right back. You entertain the masses. I'll entertain the masses. Chris is taking care of business. Um, let's take a look here, shall we? Mm, 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 mm. Uh. Massive entertainment. Ooh, while we're oh wait, 
<laughs> Don't want to go to that one. That one's great. So while we're on the subject here, um, mm, 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 mm. there we go. So one of the things I really, really loved about the soundtrack So good. Maybe turn down down a little bit before I blow everyone's ears out. Um, a little bit better there. Yeah. So collaborating with the on the soundtrack and doing the game, um, I'm a huge like. So I was the the producer for the Super Turrican Two and Mega Turrican um, games that were released on Virtual Console. Um, back in the day, so that was really, really cool. Still hang out with the Factor 5 guys, and we do work together. Um, and, I mean, we we all know it. I mean, Chris is a master when it comes to synths. And, you know, the synths are, the synth work is amazing, right? And I really wanted to enjoy, I think, that, like, Chris does a great job capturing that kind of feeling of adventure when Bryn is, like, running and gunning and jamming through the worlds, right, uh, from Turkin, main character. You know, there are so many great melodies, but then right. as you get through the world and you're, like, you're you're enjoying that kind of adventure style music with the synths, then you have the bosses, right? And those Turkin bosses, there's so many good bosses. And uh, I think, you know, challenging Chris to come back to channel some of that like old school goodness oh man like that I think we have some real real bangers um, on the on the album itself it's been a lot of fun I'm Chris back. you back I'm uh, back let me see Chris so I think your discord dropped out let me see or maybe it didn't okay there I got you I got you yes. I took the opportunity to turn on the uh, the album and, uh, oh, and nice. start talking about Thanks. it uh, let yeah. me come back all right let me double check uh Got there, got there. Okay, so in chat, first game you ever fell in love with. The game that you couldn't wait to play, that maybe you had to go out in the world, you had to go to school, you had to go to work, and you just thought about and you wanted to come back and play. What was your first first game you ever fell in love with? Mine? Yeah, sure. You're here the with me. The first one. Um... For you, we're, I mean, we're definitely probably Commodore 64. Yeah, uh, probably arcade games, um, like Scramble. Yeah? So how did how did arcade culture work back then? Because uh, arcades were for adults, right, in Germany? And there were, it wasn't well, like it was here in the States. No, when they, when they came out, they actually had them pretty much everywhere in like, um, I don't know, it wasn't regulated, so. They didn't have big arcades, but they had like, uh, they set it up in front of a toy store and stuff like that in our town. Uh-huh. And um, at, at uh, county fairs and, and things like it that. Wasn't, it wasn't Cologne, right? Where, where was your town? No, Frank, near Frankfurt. Langen, Langen near Frankfurt. Yeah, near Frankfurt. Nice. And so they, okay, so buying, they, they yeah. set up these arcades, these arcade games in front of the toy store. Now, now that's hard. It's it's so hard to play a shmup and try to talk. So like you know, right. hang on, finish Skullzor. So this guy here, this boss, is my nod to essentially. I love Castlevania Symphony. And I love the Castlevania series. I really wanted to have monsters. I wanted to like I, I loved, love basically. Oh, it's interesting. We're a little desynced. Um, Got him. Yeah, he did. Skullzor went downtown, and so um, this is my nod to the Skull Lord boss in uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Yeah, and uh, arcade games were expensive in Germany. I, uh, yeah, yeah, very. Like one Deutschmark per per game. That was more like fifty cents here. Oh wow! Uh, and um, so I saved my lunch money. That's why I'm. I was always so thin, I guess. <laughs> and put it into the arcade games as a kid. Be, be, it, like, hang out for just a few minutes, Chris. Before you. No, oh. no, no! I wanted to. I, didn't, I wanted you to tell it's me okay. stories. That's all right. We can also hang out at the end of this too. Yeah. Um, Just user says uh, he has his office in Langdon, uh, Lincoln. Today, that's where he's at. Oh, cool. Yeah, small world in a lot that's of ways, amazing. right? Yeah, yeah. 
Unbelievable. So my first game I think I ever fell in love with, that I really fell in love with. Ooh, it's a tough one. I think I fell in love with games differently too for different reasons. So it was probably, I mean, the very first shmup I ever fell in love with was was uh, Life Force. Also, it was known as Salamander. It was called Life Force here in the, uh, right. in the States. But um, man, that game, holy shit. It was, it, um, I mean, it was hard, but it was weird and like it was, or it was organic and alien. And my, I was just, I was a young dude at that point. I wasn't even, I mean, I wasn't even a teenager yet. Um, and and playing that i just got into the flow in the zone and like the with the like it was just so surreal um and i loved every minute of it it was so good and i got really good at the game so i could beat it um i didn't even know about one credit clears back then but that was probably like on the shmup side of things it was one of the very first games like shmups where i was like oh this is super cool and then you know after that gradius i mean i've been playing shmups my entire life at this point gradius and then being able to work on this on this shmup um, after you know for a couple of years, I'm just getting deeper and deeper into the shmup rabbit hole. So um, I really got to reacquaint myself with all a lot of caves work. I mean, cave or masters when it comes to shmups, Japanese shmups, and you know like uh, uh, now I'm working on my one credit clear for Kai Katana Shin. Oh no, we've poor stream. I'm def I'm stream definitely died. dying a lot now. Yeah, well this is getting harder. In the game harder. too. Yeah, this is getting harder. This guy here is the demonic mechanized demon chopper. And uh, there's a lot of um, guy? transference of like, it's like techno magic in our game. So it's a mix of sci-fi fantasy in this case. Um, we're working on Interstellar 2, by the way, Chris, um, which I really want to delve into some like synth wave, but I want uh -huh. but I also want to, um, you know, I don't, can you make synth wave fast? I don't know. Like synth wave and, and like sure. house music maybe. Um, you know, or maybe trans sure music. You can. Dude, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm think, I'm thinking along those lines. So I'm starting to do the prototype work for it. Um, I've got a very, very, very rough stuff. So it'll be a shorter game, but uh, yeah, you know, um, you're on deck. I hope for the, for the second album. Always. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. Francisco says, I remember clearly when I first heard Bionic Action in Super Turk and oh, on the SNES. Uh, that intro, the beautiful melody, and that fast uh, ar ar arpeggio going on. And uh, I thought, wow, this is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think it's not arpeggio, right? It's, um, how do you say that? Forget the term for it. It's a yeah. polyrhythm, but OK. Kyoki says, Synthwave House sounds like something I need in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. And uh, the this Interstellar 2 is all about um, essentially um, it's we're going full on sci-fi cyberpunk still, Dr. Bosky, but the world and everything is very cyberpunk, very sci-fi. So we already have the main boss and a bunch of other things that we've been doing in the world. So I've got it, I've got enough world building stuff to make eight games at this point so <laughs> by the way um kiyoki if you haven't uh, i dropped a link there um for the band camp um if you're interested in the soundtrack uh, and kiyoki what was the first game you ever fell in love with sigma seven says to dbk when programming the game you based yourself on japanese games yeah, so um, it was kind of a mix. You know, I think Japanese, uh, the Japanese shmup is definitely, um, I mean, the cool part is that, I mean, it's such a wide variety, right? Like as shmups started to evolve, <coughs> the subgenre of bullet hell became super popular. But I think that as shmups got harder, it alienated a lot of people because people just look at it and they go, I don't know how I would do any of this. And they, they lost interest. Um, and then shmups really, really like, lost mainstream appeal uh, kind of after oh, the 90s, my so first nice. continue oh no not bad though uh, this is level there goes, seven right there goes my trophies there goes your one cc <laughs> yeah so i i um 
I took influences, but uh, not just Japanese too. Well, I guess a nine hander is definitely also in that. So not a lot of um, not a lot of Western shmups um, front that I grew up with, but uh, there were a few. Not I can't think about them. Can't think of them at the moment. Yeah, it's primarily. I mean, look, Gradius, Life Force, Death Smiles, Einhander, R Type, um, and then Running Guns, right? Like that's the other thing is Running Guns. You know, like I played all the all the Turricans, right? So super excited about that. It was such a joy to work on Super Turrican two and Mega Turrican back then too um, for the Virtual Console releases because I had to come back and get good at them again to to play through. <laughs> and then also see Julian, right? Like to see him dust off his old like yeah, running gun skills for sure. Mm -hmm. Just user says my friends of mine used uh, Turkin medley as wake up alert in the morning when we had <laughs> pen and paper or computer game night. Whoa, that's awesome. Best way to wake up is with Turkin medley yeah oh man and there's some there's some magic there for sure chris trying this to rub his game hand. is definitely kicking my butt now well, this you... is like this is uh getting above my skill level you got this you got well all skill is is something that that works over time use the bottom weapon chris it'll help you i know you like the rapid fire but you see you're chunking the boss here we go Take your time. You got this. Uh, you got this. You got this. Almost. <laughs> Gotta yeah, watch so my there, there's my a, hit point more. Uh huh. Well, you just watch your your watch your weak spot. Yeah, watch the hit my hit point and then just keep firing. Yep, keep firing. Like they say, shoot or die. Shoot or die. Stay in the waves. This is a rub your head and pat your stomach moment. So you got a macro dodge around the, the diamonds while staying in the waves. It makes your brain tweak a little bit. It's super good, but it's also tricky. Less than 10% left on the boss, Chris. You got this. Yeah, it's our audio's desynced a little bit. It's funny. Nice. Is this so, the end of the game? No, almost, almost. So um, this is a interdimensional being, the Astral Ripper. And yep. how else do you send an interdimensional being uh, back to where it came from? That was my take on it. It may look like I did some drugs when I, I made that. <laughs> it looked pretty cool. Thanks, man. Kyogi says, I think it was Contra 3, the Alien Wars back on SNES. Yeah, good memories of playing that with my brother back in the day. So good. Mm, I love the Contra series. Contra, Castlevania. Oh, man. And my, my game is just a love letter to a lot of this stuff, right? Um, Castlevania. Mm, lots of Castlevania games. Um, and uh, Turkin, of course. And then, you know, there's, there's some modern versions. I mean, Metroid. I have Super Metroid, of course, right? Um, man. Mm, so, many, so many good games. So little time. Excellent. Borderline says... Parasite Eve was the first game I was desperate to go home and play. Yeah. By the way, Borderline has like eight arcade cabs, uh, cabinets, and he's deep into the shmup rabbit hole. So um, it's really, really cool to see. He's got a little YouTube channel. Uh, if you guys want to check that out as well, feel free. Your bottom weapon Ooh. also has piercing, uh, Chris, so it'll go through multiple enemies. Yeah, see, I know it's, I know it's not as comfortable. <laughs> All right, get that, get the health. You got that. Bottom weapon, Chris. Bottom weapon. It's too big. It's taking too many hits. There you go. Weapons down. Got him. Bottom weapon, Chris. These guys are beefy. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So these levels are basically the remix challenge Ooh. levels. So I brought new bosses, of course. Um, we retweaked the art. Um, they have their little mini storylines as well. But yeah, it's I know it's hard. I know it's hard. <laughs> you're also um, I can also Crazy. tell that uh, your machine is, is struggling a little bit, too. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looks OK on my end. But if the um, if the Starlink is not cooperating, then that adds to mm -hmm. it. 
Yeah, I can tell because I have a few bugs that are frame rate dependent. Um, when the, the game is getting, when it has long frames, some of the death animations will produce a, an extra long frame. Weapons up. Chris doing the best he can weapons here. Weapons up, weapons down. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's exactly why a passive mode exists. Bottom weapon, Chris. Bottom weapon. Bottom weapon, Chris. It shoots forwards and backwards. Look, it's ripping these guys one at a time. There you go. Now we got a little gap. Bottom weapon, Chris. <laughs> Come on, you got this. There we go. Undead Sea Dragon putting up some bullets here. Treant Demon, by the way, this Treant Demon is my nod to Mortal Kombat 2 Living Forest. The first time I saw a big fighting game player, by the way, played through arcades as well. Thousands, I played all the Tekken series, thousands and thousands of hours. Um, and um, it really blew my mind when I saw that stage. Oh, almost got the secret there, Chris. You missed it. By the way, the music track is amazing. I really love Thanks. how it breaks it. Like the, I love that it, like, um, a lot of video game soundtracks, they're gonna take and they're gonna make 80 seconds to maybe a minute 30 and then just loop, right? Um, and one of the things I really wanted to do because we have- Yeah, you always push like three minutes, three uh -huh. minutes. Every piece needs to be at least three minutes. Mm-hmm. And some yeah. are a little longer, some are a tiny bit shorter, but um, yeah. one of the things that I really like is that when you have something like three minutes, you have like the bridges in the middle and you have you can yeah. go a little bit further in terms of like the sonic journey. And there's so many times you have these great breakdowns and buildups and like these kind of uh, re like, you have the, the riffs on the melodies that I really like and then it pulls it back together at the end and it's still a looped track. And then by the way, for the, um, for the OST, for the original soundtrack versions of the, the tracks, we basically did proper intros and outros um, for them. So they're a little bit more tweaked. Um, and uh, so it's not just taking the, the game music and then dropping it in onto a yeah. soundtrack. So we very lovingly done. I hope people are enjoying it. People are kind of losing their minds over it, which has been really fun to see. Let me get caught up on chat. Parasite Eve, by the way, is a great game. Borderline says, 10 currently and six more on the way. Dude, oh my God, you're gonna have 16 cabinets. Oh. Borderline oh. says the obsession is no longer healthy. Uh, Borderline, by the way, has plans to uh, to open basically an arcade in Connecticut uh, every Friday. He's gonna bring all his cabs there, have kind of a warehouse thing. And it's gonna be pretty sweet, I think. Not uh, maybe September-ish is what you're thinking, right, Borderline? I learned my lesson. No, no, pacifist mode is good. Nas, I don't like it. I like to shoot. Yes, yes, but pacifist mode gives you gives you better yeah. weapons when you finish. That's true. Mm -hmm. And you definitely need yeah. Like I'm the, the thing is I I consciously designed the game not to get ah! stuck with Radius syndrome. So the lower weapon sets are still very strong. They just have less utility. There you go. Bottom weapon, Chris. Bottom weapon. <laughs> there you go, right in its face. See Satan trying to put up some things. Loki string there. Chris flipping on the flip side. Hell, the health flat flares are putting some pressure down. Oh my God, the gravity bullets. Chris oh escaping the gravity goodness. bullets from the. Oh no! <laughs> Weapons down. Weapons down. Here comes Brontress, the Dark Forest Queen. And uh, something you can see very, you can see our type influences, right? Like all over my, you know, my own sensibilities. This is straight up Japanese horror weirdness. I love it so much. Branches opening up with tons of spiders. The spiders can be tricky to deal with. There you go. That bottom weapon is very nice. Look at that. It rips all the spiders. All right, Chris. Keep it in pocket. Slow it down a little bit. You got this. Easy on the stick. Chris doing a good job navigating through the bullet curtain. Brontress. Oh, Aww, but you were there. You were in the zone. That's so good. There you go. Brontress trying her best. Switching up her attacks here. Come the spiders. I definitely am a big fan of layering the designs, but Brontress <laughs> trying with the, the, the kitchen sink. Chris is losing his mind right now. <sighs> trying his best to hold it together. 
Chris just went crazy. Bottom weapon, Chris. You got this. Finish it off. Bullet lead those. And there's a whole set of uh, like additional skills that come with bullet hell that no one talks about that, you, that take time to practice and learn. Bullet leading is one of them. Yeah, Barantris definitely hurt going into our next form here. You got this, Chris. Take your time. You got a super on deck. Super, super, super. Yeah. Especially when you're down to one hit point. Barantris about half, half her life left here. Ugh. Oh, but I saw it. I thought I saw you, Chris. You were on it. Chris wants it bad. You can see his face. That's the face of focus right there. Look at that. I don't think Chris has ever played a bullet hell shmup besides this one. Not wow. like this. No. All right. Brancha split open. Looking crazy. You got a super in pocket, Chris, if you need it. If you blast that super, do it in front of her like a shotgun. Brancha is getting down to about a 50% on the life bar. She is screaming like a demon. There are just spiders hemorrhaging out of her. She is out of control. Chris doing a great job. Lassoing, corralling these spiders. They don't know what to do with it. Getting great mileage out of the uh, the bottom uh, the bottom weapon here. Holy moly, Brancha's down, split open. She has seen better days, folks. Nice job, Chris. <laughs> and you're still you're still technically Chris. You're 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 oh, on your yeah. you're still your same playthrough. I, I don't know if you'll be able to beat the game, but you're close. But you always come back to level select uh, select and finish it off. Let me check on uh yeah, that was fun, right? What'd you think of that before you Unbelievable. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> <laughs> Okay. Well, Fran let's do another one. Francisco says another epic game I enjoyed so much playing was Tiny Thor. I know I've got that on my list. Yeah. Also, Chris did the music. Uh, did you do the full soundtrack for that game, Chris? No, I worked together with Fabian on that. Mm. Fabian Del Priora. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, another amazing uh, project of the last few years. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, I've I, I've got it to wish. I think I actually bought it, but um, it's you know my my backlog is crazy right now for games. I am I am so deep into Unicorn Overlord right now. I can't like I just I'm staying up too late. It's amazing. Is that <laughs> I should take the pacifist yeah, mode? Take it. Get those Lokis. Yeah, oh, almost got him. You have one temporary. You also get oh, a temporary hit I point. See. Go down, Chris. Go down, Chris. You got this. Down, down, down. Get ahead of them. There you go. 15 seconds left on pacifist mode. Two hit points left in the bank. You got this, Chris. You got this. Be the water. Chris taking a little bit of damage from the uh, skelly scoochers there. One, here we go. Oh no! Chris, you went crazy. <laughs> All right. Oh, cool. So this level takes place inside of a demonic titan, and the demonic titan had a whole city basically that um, sprung up inside of him, uh, and then he wound up killing all his followers trying to to wake up. Oh no, your poor machine! The stream is going crusty. There we go. Uh, and as a result, the um, when he destroyed all his followers, the the whole place went crazy. And uh, so you're still technically flying inside of a demonic titan. And now it's another evolution generation of uh, of bad bad denizens and other things that are in here. Oof, poor stream. This is the flipbook version of the game. The stream's still trying to recover. This is also um, the heaviest CPU uh, uh, taxing of the of all the levels in the game. You can go underneath if you need it. Oh no! All right, Chris has got three hit points left in the bank. Zero monster trophy medals. Chain combo multiplier just over 10, 15, and climbing. Chris trying to lead through. He knows how to deal with the dark avian mages. See, it's like we're layering and building up the skills. And you've, you've developed, I've seen your skills developing and evolving. Chris is getting routed by the Dark Avian Mages. 
There you go. Here come the hell demons. Skelly Scooters on deck there. Chris doing a great job dodging those bullets there. Skelly Scooter almost goes down. Chris opening up the uh, the middle way here, getting rid of the demonic flesh walls. Health, uh, you got a health power up on the right side there, Chris, if you need it. Chris took a little bit of damage from that, trying to grab it. Stream got, got caught up. We're dropping some frames here. Bottom weapon, Chris, if you need it. There you go. Oh, missile fan. I think you took some damage from... I can't quite tell there. Ooh, this is a good weapon, too. There you go. Keep using it, Chris. The singularity orbs. I There's 57 weapons in this game. A lot of 57. weapons. 57. Whoa. I really... So one of the things that I, I found as a, as a, a shmup enjoyer is I usually pick my weapon and I sit on it, and that's the weapon I like, and sometimes I'll change. But I have found that I got... Oh, no, Chris! You hit the wall. Yeah. Um, I know, I know. But um, I found for me that uh, that became a little boring um, because you're just always sitting at, at your, your you know, like that weapon set. So I wanted to make a shmup that was interesting for me that took the core loop and constantly is having you change weapons. You can dump your weapons to still stay on a, on a weapon that you like or to choose a better weapon for a scenario, but it keeps that, that core loop super interesting. I've never seen anything quite like it. Now, with R-Type Final 2, they have, like, over 100 ships, so there's lots of weapons, but they're all just specific, like, weapon sets you pick. So I wanted to really try that this time around. And I think it's it's a bit weird. People have to scratch their heads around it, but they get used to it. Um, and then it really becomes something I think that is compelling. Fuck me in the back. Interest. Go up top. There you go, Chris. Chris, I'm taking out the lesser demons, which is great. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Francisco says, go for it, Chris. Yeah. Nice. Oh, almost got the secret. Oh, yeah. Those lesser demons are really putting a lot of pain up there. Lesser demons wind up exiting, creating crazy amounts of pain. Here come the flame bats. Chris is really starting to struggle here. Okay, Chris, you got this. You got this. Slow it down. You got this. There you go. Good good use of the weapons. You can shoot your way through those tops if you need. Chris has never seen this before, by the way. This is the very first time. Yeah, this is uh, crazy. You got it. You got it. Nice job exploding the Lost Soul Wisp there. Shadestress coming in on deck, putting up a little bit of pressure. Chris exploring his weapon sets. Yeah, you see the utility of the quad plasma laser. <laughs> I'm using up all my continues here. You, you do, you still have, you know, you get three lives per continue, so you still got a good chance to, to you, you might beat the game. Nice job, Macro dodging through the bullet curtains there. Cool, takes, of course, once I call it out, Chris is like, let me hit one. <laughs> Chris doing a good job using his, uh, his, his Penta shot here. Manages to pick up the weapon shots, so it's just a heaven shot scatter gun. This level was a lot of fun to do. It's got a mix of kind of these like, like uh, on rails and then kind of arena shooter bits. Your bottom weapon is also super good here. Yeah. Oh, daddy. Two hit points left in the bank. Chain combo will multiplier up to 67. Chris uh, trying to see what's going on here. He's doing his best to use his bottom weapon there. Ooh, getting ripped of the, uh, the skull zor, mini skull zors there. Take some damage from the lesser demons. Finishing up the skull zors. Chris, I apologize for what's about to happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys yeah, ready for you this? are. Chris has never seen this before. You got to get those, get rid of those parasitic fairies. They're putting out pressure, Chris. There you go. Get the, get the health, get the health. Where's the health? the right up guy uh you can't see him it's fine use oh, your super Chris. no use your super and yes it gets a little crazy what wait we're worm thank you for the lurk buddy 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just keep shooting. Always be ABS. Always be shooting. Broodmother goes down. The parasitic fairy nest is now going. Here we go. This is a moment of genius. Laser grids. Chris doing a great job getting through the laser grids. Oh, he's got a little square line controls. Chris oh, is they're going it. backwards. Yep. You ready for this to know when, Chris? Here it comes. Oh, shit. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's doable, I promise, Chris, without taking damage. Top weapon. You... Top weapon, Chris. Top weapon this time. Because you had your short range there. There you go. Stay with it. You got this. Forward, forward. Oh, how is that possible? You have to, you got to scooch forward and then just straight go down where they overlap each other. There you go. Stay right around here. Up. There you go. You got this. Don't get pushed back. You got to go back up here. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Uh, Chris, go to the right. Go to the right. Stay over there. Stay over there. Stay, stay here. Use your bottom weapon. Here's a little cheat. Yeah. There you go. Safe spot. That's better. <laughs> Scooch down a little bit. There you go. Chris finding an exploit, and that's okay because he needed the exploit here. I left it in for now, and I think I'll probably leave it in. Here we go. Nice. Holy shit, ah! what's this? The Broodmother is coming back for passion. You got a super in, on deck, Chris. Blasting through. So this version of the boss is my nod to Altered Beast uh, Stage 2 boss. The head the head shooter boss. So good. And yeah, your top weapon is better for uh, shooting these guys. Ooh. Oh, Chris almost had that there. Take your time. Take your time, bullet lead these. Keep a little distance between you and the boss. Broodmother just putting out the copies. Chris is really feeling it. Yeah. One Ooh. more continue. Almost. Bottom weapon. Yep. Bottom weapon will, will push through. All right, final form. You got to do or die, Chris. Almost final form. Stay in pocket. Yeah, here comes the kitchen sink. Take your time, Chris. Do it. You got this. Nice. Oh, no. Bottom weapon. Bottom weapon. Holy shit. Wow. Woo. Woo. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Uh, Francisco says, oh my God, that many weapons. Yes, yes, there. And I know it's a lot. There's a weapon room. You can check them out and, you know, like play with them. But uh, it's to have that core loop just be changing. Always be changing. And when you die, it's very... Um, so I, I, the first time I played Space Megaforce um, from the Aleste series, they had this concept where when you die, you're basically your hit points were your weapons. And so uh, if, when you got weapon upgrades, you your hit points there. And if you got hit, you would drop your weapons. Um, and I really love that concept. I'd love to do that full on in one of my shmups. But uh, when you die in this game, you definitely are, um, uh, you definitely drop your weapons. And if you, you hit a continue, you lose all your weapons. So there's still a bit of that risk, risk reward that comes with it too. All right, Chris. Dude, you got a C for courageous. You ready for this, Chris? I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm pretty close to the end in terms of my credits and lives so uh -huh. we'll see what happens kyoki says this is intense oh snap <laughs> <laughs> dude you are not wrong Have you ever hi charlie become of dr bosky after consuming all those monster soul bits and wielding living mm -hmm. weapon armaments it could turn the universe inside out oh man evil dr bosky so one of the things about Dr. Bosky is he's got kind of that Mega Man story where when he defeats enemies, he basically takes their weapons. He's got an artifact that um, creates the defeated weapon. Uh, the defeated enemies turn into living weapons. So their soul and, and essence become uh, similar to their, their primary weapon, very video gamey. Um, and then he collects them over time. So the evil Dr. Bosky, the ship, 
as what we started with um has a lot of that that of these weapons from the different boss monsters and such so it was a lot of fun oh i'm losing lives like you it is it crazy. is tough you are not wrong is that oh goodness oh Now, this is mostly about patience. Game over! Yeah, game over! All right, so you got to come back and do the credit level, and then you can, you'll have a playthrough. Okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, you mean I should restart it at that level? Yep, because you got to see everything. Okay. So what's the, what did Steve do in this? Uh, Steve did a play test for me. Yeah, so when you look at these, okay. so before you start that next time, we can look at the credits together. Um, you'll see kind of all the people that touch this thing. Um, amigo says, ah, music von Meister comment. Comp. Great new game, says Amiga. Thank you, thank you. Charlie says, Master. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was Charlie. Uh huh. Good to see you guys. All right. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll finish this off here. So, they, it's about the same length as Gradius 5, you know, it's, so you can sit down and, and just do a playthrough in about an hour. So it's nice. It's still bite size in that respect. Shoot this communication dialogue to start difficulty selection. And then, uh, Chris, go ahead and do the. Don't do that one. Just do do heroic, real quick. Oh yeah. Uh huh. You still have continues. It's go time. Collect your star gems. What the man? Oh, just collect them all. Yep. And now uh, level selection. Mm hmm. Uh, and then go to the bottom. By the way, Chris, um, you can take a look at the weapon room too if you want. But um, let's let's uh, wrap. Uh, so do, do real quick. Go to the bottom. Go down. Go down. Yeah. Down further. Whoa! What are you doing down here? Well, DBK, since you're down here, you should know that I. What's that? And and it's a secret. In every level to test your piloting skills. Secret found. And stay inside the guiding. Bonus ship. Why okay. not put how to collect secrets in the game in a secret location? All right, so go to go to credits. Okay. <laughs> she's a cat. Of course, she's gonna like just go on and on. <laughs> so real quick, before you shoot everything, so look, look, check out. There's yeah. my, our lead artist. Look at the credits. Oh, yeah. Hey. Chris back. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so before you, you get started, audio support. So there's some sound effects support and uh, some extra things from uh, from Rudy. And then we have play testers. So yep. you know Alex Noisy from Choice Provisions. You know, uh, you don't know Brian. You might know Brian. Brian worked on uh, the original Rogue Squadron. You know Chuck McFadden. Yeah. David Silverstein. You're, you're bringing the band back together. Yep, absolutely. Kevin Riley from back in the day. Yeah. All right, you're welcome to, to jam now. Oh, by the way, Chris, get the secret at the bottom. Stay with it. Yeah, shoot this dialogue. Get the supers. Get the weapon power ups. Uh huh. Look at that. It's like a pro strat. All right, now let's get this game going. Blast him in the face, Chris. Doctor Slothulu. Well, well, well. Good afternoon, DBK. Good to see you, Slothy. Slothy, we're hanging out while Hillsbeck is doing a playthrough of Interstellar Sentinel, his very first. Super, Chris, super. <laughs> He's, his stream's lagging a little bit. Um, Chris Hilsbeck, um Slothy, is um, the main, uh, the composer for the soundtrack. So uh, we have been we spent a year working on the soundtrack. We just released it on Bandcamp. Uh, there's a link above. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Dr. Slothulu also does composing. He likes to do classical music. Chris um did an orchestral version of the turkin soundtrack uh, a few years back it was awesome awesome so you guys actually have that in common Safi, i hope you're doing well thanks for showing up bud 
And I get him. Gonna get in there. Francisco says that's so intense. He did it. Uh, I knew it. Yeah. Mika says, I love games like this. Definitely have to buy one. I oh, appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, soundtrack as well. I'll drop a couple links for you. Come on. You got this. The boring coder is dying. Pass mode. Oh, oh no. no. You got pass mode in the middle of all this. Chris, you're a monster. Uh, get to the bottom right, Chris. Oh, goodness. You probably wanted to kill the boss before you picked a pacifist mode. You, you're a nut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you told me to get it. I did. Well, the cool, the good news is they killed both. Get your star gems. All your base are belong to us. Or wait. I probably Yay. Need to add some more hit points to that. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. Ending one, you came and you saw the sights. Nice. <laughs> so, Chris, oh, yeah, wanna... that's, that, that's that little track, the last one we did. This track is so good. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That works. Cool. Yeah, it works really well. I, I really like this. This is one of those things where it's like, oh, by the way, Chris, um, the album needs an outro and a nice send you off, right? And he's like, okay. And he comes back in just a few hours with this. Genius. <laughs> I think this went super, super quick. Right, Chris? What do, what do you think? Yeah. But then again, you were also in a fever of, uh, of you know, getting the album together. Totally. Yeah, it's so good. I thought you'd like this in the space. Uh, feel free to um, continue if you like. Oh, let that run for a moment. Yeah, do your thing. Uh, you got to cool down a little bit. You were keyed up. <laughs> it's Mika a says, little bit of a reprise of the theme. Yep. We need to do a listening party, Chris. We, when are we going to do the, uh, the album listening party? Maybe, maybe next weekend. Yeah, okay. I'll, in the meantime, I have to figure out how I can stream better. Yeah, yeah. Or you could, you could play it from your end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's you know, this is just because we wanted to see your gameplay. That was the most important yeah, thing. Yeah. Dude, All right, Chris. Chris, by the way, thank you so yeah. much for playing the game. Oh, you're welcome. What'd you think? Yeah, I liked it. That's good. It is. It, it gets a little, it gets a little hairy, and um, yeah. with the monster trophy system, the better you get at the game, the more the game changes and gets more challenging for you. It's kind of cool. Ah, this is pretty good, right, Chris? Yeah, nice. little devil may cry flavor okay you got three let's see uh amiga says best soundtrack is Gianni sisters yeah twisted dreams for me oh, such a good soundtrack speaking of yeah. which what are you guys' favorite soundtracks out there video game soundtracks oh that's a i mean i i'm i don't know that's a tough one that's a, that's a, that's a tough question <laughs> there you go i even remember your initials look yeah and then uh chris if you want um you can go into level select and then you can check out the weapon room if you want to dink around for a minute or two um otherwise i'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions yeah, I think uh, I think we're starting to wrap it up. So if somebody has still some questions, yeah, I got questions for you, Chris. I got questions for you. Okay. Uh, I have to ice my hand. Yeah, are you feeling it? 
I saw, you, I saw you got really grippy there. You were it was really intense. Yeah. Um. Well, in that case, uh, let's see here. All right. Um, all right, Chris. Let's see. Questions. So here's a question. How did the concept of Interstellar Sentinel inspire the direction of the game's soundtrack? Were there any specific moments or levels in the game that directly shaped certain pieces of music? And it's a question for both of us. Yeah, as I said, uh, mostly it was the graphics guiding guiding me in the composition. Um, I, I guess I could have played the game during the development, but I had uh, other things to do too. So mm -hmm. a change just sent me uh maybe like a minute of gameplay of a certain character or game uh, or, or level mm -hmm. and then i would say like hey um try something for this and then i would just sit down and see where it would take me you know mm -hmm. that's how they how they developed nice yeah i think um from my side I knew for a long time, even before getting engaged with Chris, that uh, I really want to explore sci-fi fantasy. I really want to mix them together. I, and for a long time, I had a spaceship that was defeating a bunch of monsters and it still worked. I, I enjoyed it. And once we can support different player selections, you can then play as the as the old school where you saw the evil Dr. Bosky ship, right? Um, and I'm a huge fan of chiptune. Like, uh, there is a, an artist, and um, let's see, uh, her name is Chip Zell. Chip Zell is fantastic. And um, I was using that as a proxy for a long time while I was still working on the game because I really wanted to have this like, Chip Zell makes, especially with her early albums, it's chiptune, but it's also electronic music. He's got a bit of that house, tiny drum and bass influences. And uh, I've, I love electronic music as well, especially being uh, a Bay Area guy. Like I grew up in California. So early 90s uh, or early 90s, late 90s, uh, early 2000s, uh, I was also into raving. So I have a very close connection to this. And she brings it together in these bo both these ways. And uh, so I, I had this sort of idea of what I wanted to accomplish. And I sent a lot of this over with inspiration to Chris. But then I was like, I went through all of the Turkin tracks. I went through every track. And I sat down and just listened to it. And I was like, ooh, I started to um, to really resonate with those tracks that I hadn't heard in such a long time. And so then I was like, Chris, I need you to dig deep and find what also I love and, and you loved when you made them, those tracks. A lot of the boss tracks, a lot of boss battle tracks music, because by default, Chris generally doesn't, his BPM doesn't go super high. Like he's a lot more you know, melodic, it can get there. And I've heard your electronic music as well, Chris. But uh, I think it's a neat little fusion that we found where it's, adventure sci-fi fantasy electronic chip tune and then we've got yeah. a little of these other things like that with like the tribal drum in, uh, influences and a few other bits that have really come into it um and then just yeah. our love of just other genres like sci-fi so i think it really came together there that was that was kind of the inspiration yeah and then just experimenting with different sounds and mm -hmm. knowing that it will have actually a a, a nice visual behind it uh it just uh inspires too then so that's yeah absolutely let me check a uh, chat real quick borderline says ggs chris hi normally the soundtrack is good and it also comes from the masters what amiga says <laughs> andreas says uh one note chris face stream was always working well on the stream only the gameplay in the background uh was suffering yeah or mm. stuttering uh, from time to time, oh. no idea if that helps uh, with the next stream. Yeah, it totally is. We're doing a stream share uh, over Discord, so and yeah. So maybe maybe it's the Discord um, uh, piping the game over Discord to you. That's actually the problem, mm -hmm. not not the not the actual internet connection. We have no, to it's, experiment. It's, with... it's the internet connection, yeah. I guarantee. Okay. Uh, because Borderline also does the same thing where he streams uh, to me, okay. and, but he's also a streamer, so he's got a consistent uh, connection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here, why don't I stop the stream and then um, uh, just the the game stream in Discord? Yep. You can go and stop yep, it, Chris, yep. and then I'll, I'll play the uh, the soundtrack while we just answer a few more questions. Okay. Here. I turned my master volume to zero. 
Yeah. There we go. And do this. And we'll do that. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just taking a look to see how this, what this looks like here. Mm. Mm. Can you can you show the uh, the Bandcamp website? Uh, the Bandcamp. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I just uh, dropped mm. a, a link back in the description for that. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, anyway, super fun project. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, the soundtrack, we're, wor we're working on bringing this also to um, to CD and vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, keep, a, keep an eye out for Gamescom. It's going to be really special. Yeah. Uh, so Chris, question for you. With over, th I think uh, you're probably over 35 years of experience uh, in game development and music composition. How have the changes in technology influenced your approach to composing music for games like Interstellar Sentinel? Well, the the approach is not that different. I just uh, let the, the visual gu visuals guide me, but of course, like there's no limitations anymore where you where you uh, have to worry about oh, I have to only three or four voices and and this amount of memory and mm -hmm. can only fit these samples and stuff. So you can really kind of throw the kitchen sink at it, similar to what you're doing in the game with all the mm -hmm. the bullet hell. You mm -hmm. know, there's no limitations back then. I mean, we had we had like eight sprites on the Commodore 64, and then you did like mm -hmm. certain tricks to to uh, get more movement on the screen and stuff uh, but yeah uh, on the other hand the the limitation that helps is like when you when you limit your your palette of sounds that you're mm -hmm. playing with so uh, that's why we said like okay we want to have some chip sounds in there and uh, this and that so uh, there, there's still like limitations that you that you seek out yourself mm -hmm. to make it more interesting yeah yeah that's awesome um I, creative constraints sometimes, you know, it's, but it's nice to be, I think, liberated mm -hmm. with technology. Um, but as, as we always like to say, as we're making things right, like it, your low, your low end is always, you know, like what you're also targeting for. If it doesn't work well at the low end, you know, and there's always kind of a cutoff with the way you're chasing technology, but uh, then it, you know, it's, it's something else entirely at that point. Yeah. 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 Totally. Okay. Um, all right. Maybe one or two more questions, and then we'll see what's up with chat, and then we can um, call this a call this a day. Um, so, Chris, uh, mm -hmm. Chris, do you um, do you have any classical composers or specific musical genres that um, that you find have influenced you over the years? Like, where, what, what's kind of your your inspiration list? Yeah, I mean, I uh, my favorite classical composer is probably Beethoven, um, with like the the Moonlight Sonata is like my favorite classical piece mm -hmm. of all time. And then, uh, you know, there's others, uh, Bach and uh, Mozart and and others. But I'm not I'm not listening to a lot of classical music. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really more into electronic music and mm -hmm. um, some pop music, particularly the 80s. That's where I, where I grew up. When you're a teenager, you know, that influences mm -hmm. most of your musical um, background and life. Yep. Uh, but yeah. That's awesome. Um, let me see what else we got. Uh huh. So we already answered that. We already raining answered. again. We talked about the, is it raining again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's a good one, Chris. Uh, in your view, Chris, what makes a game soundtrack memorable and impactful? Are there any tracks in Interstellar Central that you believe particularly embody these qualities? Um, well, that's like the one thing that I always uh, hear from fans that my music is is very memorable and has strong melodies. 
and uh, for for this game project particularly, I think I I really um, uh, this rediscovered the joy of like crafting these melodies that stick in your head. Mm -hmm. So if you hear the soundtrack uh, a few times, then you probably start um, you know humming those melodies in your spare time or whatever so mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've, uh i've definitely walked around uh, my house and spe especially because i yeah as we're working on it right i've i put i mean i've i've got thousands of hours of this music in my mind and so it plays yeah. inside of my mind it, like just when i'm out and about um sometimes it can be annoying but i love it now when it comes to um when it comes to naming tracks from the game i mean i uh, actually you picked out all the titles for the tracks after I gave them more like cryptic mm -hmm. uh, uh, numbers like level four uh, stage one stuff like that mm -hmm. and then in the end you went and uh, you assigned all those cool names so I'm I actually I I can't like say right away okay this is this but mm -hmm. the theme the theme music is one of my favorite pieces that's also why I remixed it like several times for mm -hmm. for different parts of the game. And what's that? The Monster Bone Collector? Or what was it called? Uh, yeah, the uh, Monster Soul Collector. Uh -huh. Monster Soul Collector. That's mm -hmm. it. So, yeah, I mean, it was overall like an amazing project. And and now the rain is trapping me in here. Oh no! Yeah, it's well, it's it's strong out there. You get to hang out with us for a little bit longer. Then that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Kiyoki asks, have you ever had a game you could not click with? And how did you overcome that obstacle when creating a soundtrack for it? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm sure that has happened. Probably <laughs> more way back when, uh, when I didn't have a really much of a choice. I have to do something specific. Wow, the rain is really coming down now. Mm. That's just one state <laughs> over. It's red as rain over here <laughs> in California. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe how, how hard it is raining right now. Didn't you say that uh, you, it was potentially hailstones as well? Yeah, there was also hail, yeah. Oh, wow. Let me see what I can see from one of our uh, panels here. So I think you were also going to say, Chris, right? Like part of being a professional is even if you don't like the game you can you know you try your best to to make the best kind of music you can exactly right? so yeah, yeah yeah it's it's a different yeah. from when you're doing a passion project um where you you decide yeah uh what we, it's got to focus yeah it's not it's not focusing it's already calming down now I, like I saw a, a couple quick... drips yeah um let's see here Sigma seven says, "Holy crap! There was a mass of bullets. Oh yeah, from back then. Uh huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. How much is the fish? Which fish? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what Holy Debacalus says. Amiga says a new Gianni Sisters Twisted Dreams two game would be awesome. It really would. I don't. I have no idea if um because I, I think they did the remaster project uh, right like a couple years back." Yeah, exactly. That was a, a new game with the um, um, within that you know genre, um, and uh, that was super fun to do because I worked with this uh, metal band from Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, the Machina Supremacy, and yeah, that was that was super cool. Nice, uh, Doctor Slav Hulu says, "What music program do you use to compose your music?" Uh, it's all uh, Steinberg Cubase. I uh, I started using Cubase for MIDI production on the Atari ST. Don't don't tell anybody. Uh, back in the day, um, and uh, then they eventually went to port it to the PC, and I never looked back. Uh, went with the PC version, and now it's like a full. You have a full virtual studio with that, so you can load in plugins of all these classic synths and all that stuff and uh, create a whole soundtrack in the computer. Which is kind of like going back to the roots, right? Mm -hmm. You, we, we used to do music with the Commodore 64 and the Amiga, just one computer. And now I'm doing all the music with my laptop, one computer. 
Oh, that's... It's full circle, right? That's awesome. Full circle there. Yeah, yeah Sloth, Sloth who says, ooh, I like Cubase. <laughs> yeah, no, it's right. an awesome tool. Okay. Uh, yeah, into our, into all right. Burning questions. Chris, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. This has been a huge passion project. Um, and we're just, in some ways, getting started, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I'm really keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, some pressed, as we say in Germany, that will manage to get it onto console and find a publisher for it. And uh that is in the works and mm -hmm. uh that would be awesome to open open it up to a wider audience and mm -hmm. uh of course when you when you put it out on console it's kind of like even more legit right mm -hmm. yep absolutely uh well we're we're starting we're breaking ground on the uh, playstation 5 version so that's where i spend a lot of time playing games i still play pc games all the time as well so but uh yeah um also the game um it's kind of weird because uh uh, the game runs on Steam Deck at, at a solid 60 FPS, um, but I use my Steam Deck docked because it's small screen, and then I get to play the game on my my 46 inch uh, um, LG OLED panel, and the game yeah, is just yeah. gorgeous. Well, a lot of people are like, a lot of people really love the fact that the game has so much color. It's very bright, and it's yeah. you know it's it's got its own kind of tune style. Um, and, uh, my, you know, my, my team's just living the dream, you know, this is all over, our, our, you know, no one, and no one's making these things for commercial success anymore. Um, but it's been, you know, passion projects, right? Absolutely. And it's on steam. So you can all check it out mm -hmm. there. Yep. Uh, and, I dropped uh, the links in description. Excellent. And, um, yeah, so I would say let's, uh, maybe, um, meet up again next week or so when we yeah. do like just just a just a listening and chat um of the soundtrack and maybe a few other pieces from my um catalog yeah that'd be great that would be fantastic and then and then uh we'll hopefully make this more of a regular stream again i have to figure out how to get how to get a better internet connection here but with your help at least the music will be clean mm -hmm. and yeah it'll be fun i mean i i you know uh and then chris let's let's see if we can get uh, you know I, I gave you the version that i made you just need to do that that intro or, or do a little oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, then, have, and then i can put the video together some other, and we can put it on right we have some other we have some other plans for mm -hmm. it exactly. all right cool all right. well, well we're thanks everyone off. yep for Thank you, everybody. uh tuning in sorry about the uh little problems here and there but we had fun and yeah. Uh, we'll meet up again next week or so. All right. One last check on the chat before we sign off here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. People are saying, woo, please also for Xbox. It's on the list. All right. All right, Until guys. Next time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good time. Bye. The stream's on your end, Chris. Just shut off. Yep. I do end stream. Bye-bye. End in stream. And then on the Twitch side,